Coming up on show 523, the MG ZF is spotted charging. New battery technology and Toyota are debuting a full electric shock horror. Well, those stories and many more coming up on today's podcast. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, wherever you're listening around the world. Whatever you're doing, driving, walking, running, taking the dog out, maybe on your commute, listening in the kitchen. Hello to uh, the show. Welcome, I should say. Hello hello to the welcome. Uh, this is not a good start. Welcome to the show. And hello, uh, my name is Martin Lee, and I'm not normally this bad. Normally I go through every EV story in a day, and I try and pick out, because there's something, there's so much going on these days in the world of EVs, I try and condense it down to give you the essential information. Thank you very much to the support, as always, of myev.com for helping me make this show. A little while ago, they realised that buying a used EV in the USA was, was broken, frustratingly hard to find all the cars you wanted in one place, so rather than whinge about it, they went and built a solution. And that's what myev.com is. Check it out if you're in the USA. Quick mention for Moto E over the weekend. Congratulations to the winner of the very first all-electric bike racing series. Nicky Tully, by the way, from Finland, was the winner. And he won the race with a couple of laps to spare because the race had to be stopped there. Another driver, another racer, rider, I should say, Lorenzo Savadori. It was actually came off his bike. Uh, looked like he hurt himself as well, like uh, hurt his wrist. He walked off uh, holding his wrist, but the bike carried on tumbling and tumbling and uh, hit one of the crash barriers. I think it burst the airbags in the crash barriers. And so for safety reasons, that has to be repaired for the, the, that race, but also subsequent races. So with two laps to go, they stop the race. Next Moto E is going to be on 11th of August in Austria. I really enjoyed it, by the way. Watch the highlights today. I couldn't find anywhere to watch it live over the weekend, apart from paying $140 on the MotoGP website for a season pass. Not going to do that. Uh, but I found somebody had uploaded a... Um, a questionably legal version on YouTube today. And so uh, I watched that and watched the highlights. What was interesting was the commentators. I guess it's the guys that normally commentate on the bike racing, the you know, just the regular engine bikes. And they weren't exactly bitching about it, but they weren't supportive, which was really surprising to me. Because if you're commentating on a race, right, you commentate on the race and you, uh, you're excited about the, the race that you are, that well, I would be anyway, uh, that I was... Uh, telling the story off for the people watching, but they spent a lot of time moaning about the noise of the engines, how it was too quiet, how you could hear the rider's knee caps, the kind of knee protection as they rubbed on the green. You know, when, a, when a bike racer goes down around a corner and they tip the bike almost, I don't know how they stay on the bikes, but they tip the bikes right over their knees, rub against the ground. Uh, you could hear those, whatever they are, like hard plastic or metal things, rubbing on the tarmac. And they were whinging about that, that it was too quiet, didn't like the sound, uh, said that they're not sure they'll ever get used to watching electric bike racing, which was a curious thing to say for the commentators. It was quite bizarre. I imagine after the first race, probably I imagine if I was one of their managers, I would tap them on the shoulder and say, uh, maybe not next time. So we'll see. Next race is going to be 11th of August. Let's get on to some car news then. And here in the UK, the Kia Soul EV. Kia make great EVs. And Kia make the Soul. And there's a brand new Soul EV coming. It's a cracker as well. It's a great little car. But the price <laughs> is interesting. £33,795 is the price, and that is with the free government money already taken off. They call it the first edition grade. And without the government money, it would be almost £38,000. First examples of the Soul EV first edition will reach the UK shores next year in 2020, sometime in Q1, so that is, you know... If it's end of March, could be nine months away. All new uh, Soul EV is available in the first edition model. It's got a 64 kilowatt hour battery, 280 miles, 80% charge in just over an hour. Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, lots of luxuries. Very good. We like the car, like the Soul. I like the styling. It's quirky. You know, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. And I like the look of it. I think it looks nice. <sighs> but it's not going to be here for ages. Not going to get one until at least January the 1st, 2020. When do the new emissions laws come in here in the EU for car makers to hit their 95 grams of CO2 per kilometre travelled? Oh, let me think. 1st of January. Could they make the car and deliver it now? Is a question. I don't know. Maybe they're short of batteries. Maybe they're just all having a nice long summer there in South Korea. Maybe the bosses have said to the factory workers, you know what, guys? 
Don't worry about it till the 1st of January. How come? Ah, don't worry about the finer details. You guys enjoy some holidays. So we're not quite sure why the Kia Soul EV won't get here till January 2020. I'm sure it's a pure coincidence. There are some new regulations coming in, uh, oh, when did I mention? January 2020. It's beginning to get a little bit frustrating with some automakers. Uh, the cynicism of not making enough cars. There is such enormous pent-up demand for people to drive clean, green, fun EVs, and those companies simply will not make them. Maybe they can't get the batteries. Maybe they can't make them. And the pricing, the pricing as well, it's not a cheap car. It's not even a reasonably balanced in terms of EVs kind of car. It's Thirty-three, thirty-four thousand pounds, which is an immense amount of money. Anyway, uh, fantastic that it's coming. And if you've got one on order, I mean, you can now order one. Uh, maybe you, you may you drive the Kia e Nero, maybe the Hyundai Kona. Also, very, very nice cars. Not that you can get one because the waiting list is is a year for those. Well, at least until um. Oh, when is it? January 2020. Hey, I'm wearing my cynical pants today. Look, let me take them off. I mean, metaphorically, I'm not going to undress while I'm reading to you. Uh, let's talk about the MGZS. This is positive news, like this podcast always is positive news. Another new EV coming to Europe, actually, initially, only coming to the UK from a Chinese company, which bought the MG name. They make MGs under that brand now, and owned by SAIC. And this was spotted at a Fastned DC fast charger in the Netherlands, according to side EVs. A Twitter user called Michael shared the photo and it was a Chinese test driver who was charging it. Had a little chat with this chap on Twitter and he said it probably charges up to about 85 kilowatts on CCS. I'm not sure he should have been sharing that information, but thank you, Chinese test driver. Uh, a range of 270 Ks, about 170 miles on the WLTP test cycle. And the price starting at around 30,000 euros, that's about 33,000 US dollars. Battery size of that, 44 and a half kilowatt hours. Great looking car, very affordable, and it opens the EV market up into the slightly cheaper segment for families who need a good four or five seats and lots of luggage and things for the kids. New battery technology is coming. I'm excited about this. SK Innovation, the big Korean battery maker, has announced it's going to begin using state-of-the-art lithium-ion battery chemistry this year, in fact, in the third quarter of this year. According to a report in a South Korean newspaper and reported by electricrevs.com, SK Innovation has previously announced it's going to start making the NMC or the NCM 811 cells beginning, meant to be last year. I'm not sure it ever happened, so they're starting this year. Those cells were going to be used in the Kia e Nero, but, again, I'm not sure that ever happened. SK Innovation eventually supplied cells to Kia that are similar in characteristics to the old 622 cells. So we're going to explain what these numbers mean in a moment, by the way, if you're new to us. And that its competitor, LG Chem, was supplying the Hyundai for the Kona. So the Kona batteries, LG Chem, the Kia e Nero, a different battery supplier. Both 64 kilowatt hours, by the way. And actually, when you read a lot of reviews and you see a lot of YouTube videos, you'll often see people mistakenly say, oh, it's exactly the same battery pack in the, 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 you know, the Nero and the Kona. I see that loads. I see that it's, like, it's widely reported exactly the same battery pack and they would be wrong if only they did their research now also the soul is going to be using those sk innovation cells but i don't know yet whether it's using the new chemistry or not so what's this all about with the 811 cells the nmc or the ncm you might see it called 811 lithium ion cells are made using various chemistries and mixtures of metals in the cathode which is the positive side of the cell while the negative the anode side is normally graphite. So the primary lithium ion cell cathode chemistries used in the latest EVs are typically nickel, cobalt, and aluminium. So that's the NCA type of chemistry. That's that that would be like the Tesla cells. Then there's the NMC or NCM, nickel, manganese, cobalt, or nickel, cobalt, manganese, if you see them written as the NCM cells. Now they are also uh, used in like many of the Korean cars. The Chinese car and bus makers, by the way, use a battery chemistry, I think it's like an iron phosphate that's less energy dense. Cobalt, the cobalt, the C of the NCM cells or the NM NM NMC, the cobalt is much more expensive than the nickel or the manganese. And it is primarily sourced from a small number of mines. So 
Let's bring this story full circle. If you, as a battery maker, can reduce the amount of uh, materials that are more expensive, but also there are some issues as well to do with mining. So what do what we say 811? It's because that's the proportion. So 80% of the nickel and 10% cobalt and manganese. So it's an advancement in the chemistry, more efficient as well. I believe more energy dense. I'm no battery expert. And so this is great news that SK Innovation in South Korea start to make those batteries sometime this year. Still picking up a couple of uh, leftover stories from the weekend and the Goodwood Festival of Speed. Mark Webber, the former Formula One driver for Red Bull and uh, who else? Jaguar? Yeah. Uh, Mark Webber drove the Tycon up the Goodwood Hill. He said this, and I quote, The Tycon's power delivery is awesome. I took part in the event in a Porsche 911 GT2 a couple of years ago. I knew all it all comes down to power and traction. Even for a thoroughbred racer like me, it's amazing how the Tycon, even though it's a prototype, accelerates off the start and out of the course. Corners, end quote. He was delighted. I mean, I should say that he's a Porsche ambassador these days, so he's not going to go, yeah, we're well, very good. Back in the factory, boys, get it sorted out. Uh, so he was only ever going to praise it, but the Porsche Taycan cannot be far away now from uh, being a full production model. Toyota are presenting a new commercial vehicle strategy. The most important announcement from an EV perspective, in cooperation with PSA Group, so uh, Peugeot, Citroën, uh, Toyota is launching a fully battery electric version of their vans, the ProAce and the ProAce City, from 2020 onwards, says Electrive. Now, since 2016, the Toyota ProAce has been manufactured together with a couple of other vans, the Citroen, or the Citroen Jumpy and the Peugeot Expert. That happens at a PSA plant in Valenciennes, in France. Now, the Opel Zafira, uh, the Life, also adopts this technology, the quartet of vans, really, based on a platform that has nothing to do with any other car that Toyota makes or any other van that Toyota makes, but Toyota makes them on this platform by PSA. And because Peugeot Citroën are electrifying this platform, by default, I guess, I mean, Toyota could opt out a fully battery electric Toyota van. We're looking forward to the Pro Ace and the Pro Ace City coming next year in full battery electric form. I wonder if it will be <coughs> self-charging and not a drop of fossil juice going inside it. How very un-Toyota. Let's talk about our question of the week this week. Uh, I would love to hear from you if you want to answer this one. Keep your comments coming in on email or the comments. Uh, should we do things which grab headlines but use fossil fuels? Things like setting electric records. Things like the Goodwood things over the weekend with all the electric cars. Can they guarantee that that electricity on which it was charged was 100% green. Things like Formula E and the Moto E, the bike racing. All those people that went to watch those races, did they arrive in fossil cars? Should we be doing things with electric cars that increase the use of fossil fuels? And if you, even if you're racing an EV, are you sure that was charged on 100% renewables or was the grid dirty at the time you charged it? Should we do these things for the sake of press and publicity or should we be more moral about it and not burn fossils in these kind of endeavours that are just fun YouTube videos but don't really achieve anything? Let me know your thoughts. You can email me, hello at evnewsdaily.com. Leave a comment on Facebook and Twitter if you want to. Well, thank you to 230 patrons of the podcast that keep me going. Uh, your generosity means we get to make this show every single blooming day. I can't believe you part with my voice seven days a week. Maybe we need some guest presenters uh, coming on the show. Hey, I'm looking at going away in August to uh, see some friends in Italia. And uh, I'm not driving, unfortunately. I'm flying. Talk about fossil fuel use. Uh, I'm tight for time. So I'm flying. Wanted to drive. Wanted to drive down and charge on green electricity. But yeah, it's about two and a half days, three days of driving. I can't get the time. So I'm flying. Oh, dear. Someone's feeling guilty already. Uh, so, yeah, maybe in August, maybe we take a break, or maybe somebody else is a guest presenter of this podcast. How about 
be interesting. There are 522 previous episodes of the show online for free, where you get your podcasts from. If you subscribe, you get them first and free and automatically. And if you can leave a little review for me, a little star rating, the rate and review, they call it, that'd be amazing. Oh, I'll come and catch up on the socials by searching EV News Daily. Have a wonderful day. I'll catch you tomorrow. And remember, there is no such thing as a self-charging hybrid. <laughs>